Hello, everyone. Here's my entry for Mock-Up Monday. The overarching theme this week was candy. The descriptors were group choice, and they were mad scientist, steam-powered, brass, tusk, boiled. The story, while not true horror, at least, again, I don't feel it as such, does have some trigger warnings. Please do check the list below. So without further ado, let's go ahead and listen to The Secret Formula. Dr. West, get up and go, Ultra Pet Peppermints. These delightfully tingly little candies will reanimate your dead feet after a long day of work. Our secret formula will keep you moving long into the night. Ani grimaced as her boss's voice chimed out over the radio. Bastard. She'd swear he was figuring out her favorite stations purely to bother her with ads. Every time she'd switch to a new station, it felt like a week or less before he'd pop up. Still, he paid well and even paid for her secrecy as she ventured through the night into the dark ice caverns beneath Antarctica. The strange fossils he paid her to bring back always made her head buzz. Secret formula is right. Her mind wandered back to when she'd been introduced to the man. He'd rubbed her the wrong way almost immediately, but his money spent as well as any others, and well, she needed it. He'd all but dragged her onto his ship, which had cruised through the fog-soaked seas, adding to it with the steam-powered engine. The occasional whistle of the pipe swallowed up by the seemingly endless waters as it grew colder and colder, finally berthing through the ice at a strange stone pier. Follow the path down, find the skulls, just take the tusks. He'd commanded, then leaned back in his chair near the boiler where it was warm. He'd pulled out a small notebook and began to scribble in it, already having lost interest in her. Arrogant git, Ani muttered. She'd made this passage nearly fifteen times now, to the point where he didn't even come along anymore. At least, not in person. She glowered at the radio that had been installed, right next to where the warmest spot was. She felt the ship stop moving and picked up her coat from where it was spread over the hot brass metal, tucking the stones she kept for warmth into the pockets, then strode out into the cold, dark night. The pathway that led down to the cavern never seemed to be exactly the same as the previous visit, but always ended in the same spot. The gaping black pit in the snow and ice drew your eye to it with its stark contrast. She took one last breath of the bitingly cold air, then stepped inside, holding it for as long as she could before the burning sensation in her lungs forced her to exhale, then draw in breath. The cavern was overwhelmingly scented of mint. She'd asked him about this many times, but he'd simply laughed and said, ah, The secret of the secret formula, that and, well, a few other things anyway. You won't get it out of me, it's all locked up tied up here. He tapped his skull and chuckled. The mints were sold at nearly every chemist's. They were far too useful to not be. One of the luridly green little lozenges could keep a man on his feet for the whole day, no matter what went down. She'd heard rumors of a fishing boat sinking, and when the rescue boats had made it out there, they'd still been hauling the nets in. They kept you focused, energized, and— Gods damn the man! Even when thinking of the disturbing events, she felt like there was an ad playing in her head. Give them a licking and you'll keep on ticking. She remembered when they'd been sold in lollipop form, the strange crystalline green color seeming to make the stick they were poured on glow. Wonder if they'd still be so excited for this if they knew where it came from. She gazed up at the wall in front of her, at the massive features her brain refused to comprehend. The jaws twitched as she approached, but she'd long ago learned to ignore this, trying to focus purely on the tusks that jutted from the lower jaw, the same crystalline shade as the candy. As she hefted her pickaxe and lashed out, each strike rang like a bell, shards scattering on the cloth she had spread below. The noises began, as they always did, on the fifth strike. Not screams. She wished they were screams. No, this was the shifting of flesh on stone, the dragging of something heavy, followed by the strange pleading of some unknown language. It never came from the mouth in front of her, always from the sides, where her eyes refused to focus. Another blow to the tusk in front of her, another scattering of green shards as the dark fluid began to drip from above, hissing against the leather oilskin coat. The mint smell intensified, the world darkening at the edges of her vision. The sounds grew louder, 
Louder, she gritted her own teeth, feeling like they would crack like the tusks in front of her. It was when she felt the slow caress against her leg that she knew it was time to go. She gathered the edges of the cloth and ran, leaving the pickaxe. It would be gone when she next returned. She knew that. She ran from the gripping dark. The begging sounds that had begun to take on the far too recognizable cries, bursting into the painfully bright light, collapsing into the snow where she felt her skin twitch and begin to bubble, boiling where it was exposed to the bright arctic sunlight. She groaned, fetching one of the crystals out, popping it raw into her fanged mouth as she staggered upright. The pain reduced to nothing. The world reduced to her task. Take the bag to the ship. She stepped again and again, leaving a trail of what had replaced her blood behind. It would heal. Just like everything else. After all, she knew better than anyone else when Dr. West had said it would reanimate someone. It wasn't an exaggeration. Thank you all for listening. As always, the link to Pixel Wolf's channel for those who are listening to this on YouTube will be down below. This week my art was done by Count Ravenwolf. Link to his Twitch channel will also be down below. And remember, it's not always candy. <laughs>